Good morning, church. I need to get up when I wake up or I'll have to start saying good afternoon. Anyway, today I want to take you to Luke chapter 15, one of the most famous passages in the book of Luke. But we're going to start at verse 10, one verse before the famous story that we call the prodigal son. In verse 10, it says this, in the same way Jesus is talking, he says, I tell you there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke chapter 15 is the context of Jesus telling a number of different stories of someone who is lost or something who ha- that has been lost. And up till now, he's talked about a woman who lost a coin, found it, and then rejoiced that she found it again. Uh, and he has talked about uh, a person who has lost a sheep from his hundred sheep. He's lost one of them. He leaves the 99 behind. He goes after the one, gets it, and brings it back and celebrates And Jesus is making the point that if you have been a follower, if you have lived a good life, then you, God is proud of you, but a person who has lived a bad life and comes back, God rejoices over that. And then he tells this story. And so I'm going to read you the whole story, maybe make a comment or two along the way, but let's just go with it. Uh, Verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. That's as if the young son is saying to the dad, Dad, I wish you were dead. Could I have my inheritance now? But nonetheless, the father does. It says, so he divided his property between them. That means he divided his property between his sons. So the older son gets his double portion And the younger son gets his single portion. Anyway, verse 13. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants." And so he got up and went to his father. Now, what's interesting, of course, is that this kid is doing what all of us would do when we realize we've made a mistake. He's rehearsing his speech for his dad. The reason I'm making a comment about it now is that I want you to be able to hear him giving that rehearsed speech to his dad and just see what happens. It says this, But while he was still a long way off, His father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Two things you need to notice. One, of course, that has been commented a lot by many, many pastors is that the father notices the son while the son is still a long way off, which means the father has been looking for his son repeatedly. The father has been gazing out towards the horizon probably every single day, wondering, is this the day my son is going to return? But the other detail I want you to notice is that right after the son gives his speech, the father doesn't even respond to the son. The father doesn't say, oh no, son, you are my son. You're always my son. I'm going to just love on you. No. Instead, the father says to the servants, quick, bring the best robe. The way I picture it in my mind is that the father is not even listening to what the son says. The the son starts going into his repentant speech of, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the dad doesn't even hear it because the dad is too busy yelling to the servants to bring the best robe. 
I think a lot of times we get ourselves into a place where we think we have to say the right words to God, that uh, God is for some reason not going to pay attention to us until unless we give like the right speech. <laughs> Meanwhile, this father is just simply saying, oh no, I'm just going to get everything that I need to show this kid how much I love him. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing, so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is a passage that people have loved for centuries. But I want to highlight a couple things for you. God is not fair. Especially when we're facing times of difficulty, we think we want a God who's fair. But we don't. I don't want a God who's fair. I don't want a God who's fair because in this story, I'm kind of like, I wouldn't necessarily say the dad, I'm kind of like uh, the, the uh, uncle. The uncle who gives the dad advice, who says, let this son go. He's gone from you. He's treated you like you're dead. Just go ahead and let him go. After all, he's getting what he deserves. He wasted all of his wealth, and now there's a famine. Well, whoop-dee-doo, there's nothing that we should do about it because lack of planning on your part should not constitute an emergency on my part. So, son, fine, you can just be a servant if you want to be a servant. That's, see, I'm the, I'm the uncle who's not even like described in the story, but that's kind of like me. But then again, I'm also like the older brother. The older brother who says, hang on a second, this isn't fair. That, that kid, he's wasted, he's wasted your money, he's disrespected you, he's wasted my inheritance. Because with less money in the household, there's less money we can invest, so that means my own inheritance is going down. This kid is just irresponsible, there's nothing we should do for him. I'm kind of like the older brother. But the truth of the matter is I'm also like the younger brother. I'm the one who's done my own thing. I'm the one who's gone my own way. I'm the one who's shown disrespect to my heavenly father. And then I come back and I say, I'm sorry. And I give my prepared speech. And God has already forgiven me as I was on the way back. God isn't fair, and I'm so glad. Because a fair God would kick this kid out. He doesn't deserve anything. But I'm glad God isn't fair. Because I am that younger brother who needs a God who says, let me wrap you up in the best robe. Let me throw a feast for you. I don't even care if you deserve it or not. I love you. You were lost to me, and now you're found. And having you back is the greatest thing. Listen, you might be complaining these days about a God who doesn't seem fair. I want to ask you to turn your complaints into a thanks and say, God, thank you for not being fair. And help me to do my part 
to bring justice into this world where it needs to show up. And in the meantime, God, thank you that you for now at least are a God more of grace than of justice. Help me also bring grace to this world. May we be that kind of people today. Let me pray for you. Lord God, Thank you for not being fair, but thank you for being a God of grace. I pray that you would make us people of grace, even as we're also trying to be people who bring justice into this world. And Lord, when the time comes, when Jesus returns, and you finally work ultimate justice in this world, we will then all over again thank you for your grace to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a grace-filled day. God bless you.